hi it's christy from tales of the ravenous reader and i'm here right before christmas to talk about um the finale for remade which is cereal boxes young adult cereal um i have been reading this cereal since well before it came out because i got the first episode on netgalley and have been pretty much obsessed with it since then i have recapped every episode weekly i've taken part in twitter chats i've you know, um, added all the authors on Twitter and talked to them about their great work. And so I'm really excited to share kind of my final thoughts on the entire um, season and the season finale. So while I have kept my reviews pretty much spoiler free for the entire time, this one will not be because one, hello, why haven't you read it yet? And two, it's really hard to talk about the whole season without um, spoiling some of it. So if you have not heard of Remade, I can give you a little snap, you know, shot of what it is and then we'll get into talking about, you know, what my thoughts on it are and maybe even some predictions for the future. So Remade, the lives of 23 teenagers are forever changed and that's not just because they happen to die within the same minute. Remade in a world they barely recognize, one with robots, space elevators, and unchecked jungle, they must work together to survive. They came from different places, backgrounds, and families, and now they might be the last people on the planet. So I love that they talk about, in the summary, that they talk about robots and space elevators, um, but not giant bunnies or unicorns, <laughs> which are totally also in this world, and that's kind of how I think about the remade world, but um, it's, if you haven't seen all my posts about it, it's really a unique writing um, way because it's not written by one author it's written it's one story written by six authors in this case it is um written and developed by matthew cody and it is also written by um andrea phillips and gwenda bond kirsten white ec myers um and carrie harris i think that's everybody um and they're all phenomenal i absolutely adored all the writing in this i loved um that each of them bring their own style, but it feels very cohesive. And that's because they created this, this writing room space, similar to how TV shows are, obviously, this is serialized media. So it's really similar to how TV shows are developed. They kind of get in a room together and talk about how it's going to go and all of that. And I'm interested personally in kind of knowing how Matthew Cody thought it was going to go and then kind of how everybody else's opinions shape that. So I'm looking forward to perhaps an interview in the future that might address that. So, I want to talk a little bit about the character. So obviously we start out with, um, well, as I said, 23 teenagers, but that's not really how, it's not like you get plopped down into the world and we get 23 teenagers, right? It's actually really cool how it's written. At least I think it's really cool that each of the main characters, which not all 23 are the main characters, but each of the main characters who we see um, pretty much from start to finish have their own kind of episode or an episode share with one other person where we really get to explore what their motivations are, a little bit about their personality, um, where they were right before they were brought into the remade world, and kind of a little bit about what they bring to the table. So I love one of the things I love about this is the the characters all have something unique that they bring to the table. Like when you're thinking about developing a team, you're thinking about how do you bring different elements into the team, and obviously, um, as you as you read remade, you find out that each of them has a very important. Thing that they bring to the table and remade and it seems not random and very much is not random as you go through the plot you find out really it's really not random or at least it's assumed that it's not random so my absolute favorite character is actually the first character that we're introduced to who is Holden. Holden is um he's so sweet but he's just kind of like oh you feel so bad for him along the way because <laughs> um he really is kind of really into Sega who is not into him back um as much as you want that ship to work, it's not going to work. I think he realized, he does realize, realize that throughout the thing. But they actually, the way that they end up in the remade world is together, him and Saya end up together. And we see them kind of running for their lives at the beginning from the crazy uh, spider-like robot. So I loved him from the beginning. I loved him all the way through. He makes a really tough choice um, partway through the plot that really kind of alienates him and makes him kind of, 
um, the bad guy, but you find out why. Not bad guy, it's not really the right term, but he's kind of like the conflict, right? He's the he's the antagonist in that section of Remade. Um, but you think you have empathy for why he does it because you get his backstory. So I love that in, we get the backstory of each of the characters, or most of the characters. Um, I also love Loki, who that's not his, that's not the name that he was born with, but that is the name he, he chooses to go by, which I really appreciate the author's kind of negotiating that and going through that process. Um, He's got a really kind of tragic ending. Um, he's really into video games and he had had a lot of conflict at school and, and that conflict ultimately leads to um, his death by suicide, which is really, really tragic. And I was sobbing through that whole episode, um, but he brings a lot to the team. And part of his, what, part of what he brings to the team is something I really appreciate, which is that almost kind of really future thinking thought process and a little bit of impulsivity because you have to take some risks sometimes it doesn't feel like good risks but i really appreciate that he brings that to the team there's also may who has some really terrible food allergies um even though i don't have food allergies i can definitely emphasize empathize with may because i have major food issues and um what happens if you wake up in a world where the food's kind of wonky like for example they um the food is kind of given to them from machines and Along the way, they find a liquid that looks like coffee, but tastes like orange juice with um, a twinge of ass. That's how it's that's how it's portrayed in the book. Um, so she has these really bad allergies, and like she doesn't know what's in any of this food. She doesn't know anything about any of this food. But what do you do, right? Like you ha you have to choose, right? You can eat, and you don't have an epipen with you. You could eat and take a chance, or you could not eat and starve to death. So. I really love um, that she's explored in that way and that that's kind of brought to the table. Like you're not you're not gonna get this perfect set of people who's gonna be able to function perfectly. There's gonna be some kind of interesting conflict in there. Um, there's Saya, like I said before, she is part of the drama club and ends up in the remade world because of, um, she got into a car with Holden and they were plucked from their, you know, their death, their moment of death to be in the remade world. And so she's there with him and she's kind of, quiet and thoughtful and um i appreciate the times that she's kind of like on point it's really really great there is also um Umta, who is kind of an out an outcast within the team she doesn't she clearly doesn't feel like she belongs within the team she's not doesn't seem to be from their their time period and so she has kind of a, a hunter gatherer protector um way of thinking about things and She's really dynamic. Really, her, even though she may be of a similar age, I'm not really sure, She, her thinking process is really different than the, the other teens that are in the series. So it's really interesting to see kind of her, she kind of, she gives them advice, but then kind of lets them do their own thing. And that doesn't always pan out for them. So it's very interesting. We meet, um, well, there's also some other characters that end up not making it all the way through. And obviously you can't have a dangerous world without some death, so there are multiple characters that, that make it not all the way through, which is really sad. Um, there are Teddy and Inez, who we meet later. They kind of come in part way through, and you're like, whoa, what's happening here? Um, what are they doing here? And Teddy is a reality team TV star, which is very interesting. And part of one of the theories that the authors throw at us is maybe like this is a reality TV world, kind of like the Truman Show. <laughs> and maybe we just don't know. And he's kind of thinking, maybe it's also in my head, who knows? So it's that thought of like, oh, um, what's happening here? They wake up in a different place than the other remades do. So we meet them a little bit later. And as is kind of the no BS, um, you know, straight to the point, kind of, you know, kind of maybe brass or kind of just kind of different and I, I really appreciate the fact that she questions a lot of stuff and that she's kind of the, she is the leader of the team um much to maybe Loki and Holden's kind of dismay although she and Holden later kind of become co-team leaders in a sense because they balance each other out really well but she's great her ending is really tragic she um you know she's had a lot of stuff going on in her life and had been a primary caregiver within her her family and so her ending is really tragic and i really appreciate the fact that she's kind of lived beyond her years and so she has a different insight oh nevea oh gosh nevea nevea is so sweet she is the caregiver of the entire um team and the reason why she is the caregiver is because she had she had cancer and was very sick for most of her life and um was kind of actually I, 
made to be even more sick than she was by her mother who tried a lot of experimental treatments and didn't give her the treatment that she really needed and has a lot of a lot of feelings about that and that comes out in what she brings to the team but because she has so much insight and knowledge into the medical world she kind of becomes a person that helps out whenever there's any kind of a medical emergency and so she's part of that and really helps the team with that and i love that she's kind of quiet and doesn't try and make decisions her role really is to be that person to help out the team when they when they really need it um there is also cole Oh, Cole was such a surprise to me. He got his own episode really late in the season and was kind of the first to discover about the remade world. Um, he is different than the others that he was a farmer, kind of leads a simpler life than some of the other teens and actually um, has had a baby really young and was in a very serious relationship really young and, and really kind of just tends to land. And so his perspective on, and his ability to work with things is different than the others. And so I, I feel for him because he, he gets to see kind of how his life, how life played out without him going forward. And that must be really difficult. So I love that episode with him in it and I felt for him. And I, and I love that we got episodes for characters later that it wasn't all like up front, here's all the characters and then there's a conflict. It was kind of inter woven throughout and I appreciate that because I think what makes Remake really special actually is the characters and, and what they bring to the story and their unique properties which is factors into the plot later which is really really cool there are more um there are more people within the team such as Sunita she I don't we haven't spent a lot of time with her so I don't really know all of what she's about and I'm looking forward to getting to know her um later and then also Hiram who is is the youngest of the group and so sweet and I just I love that the team protects him so I'm I also really look forward to getting to know more about him later so what the heck we got all these really great characters right? that's a lot of characters actually within a team if you think about it so what the heck is going on within the story so basically like I said they wake up in this really strange world where there are um, space elevators and robots and not good robots fire like spider like robot big robots and just really foreign where the world is not quite right and so you're thinking i was thinking to myself i'm like making up all these theories as you go along and i'm like okay maybe maybe this is like somebody's like strange world maybe somebody that doesn't really have a grasp on the world knows is has created this kind of fantasy world or maybe it's I don't know it could be literally anything but basically you learn as you go along that there are a lot of dangers in this world that there's a an untamed forest and that's where they kind of end up and that untamed forest leads to a lot of deaths within the team um they're trying to figure out do we at one point they're all on a train um because two of them come in on the train and so they get on the train and the train is literally going nowhere they have no idea where it's going and so they have to decide do we get off or do we try and stop it or do we hope that it doesn't crash or like what's going on here but it was picking up speed so they ended up um getting off the train in a not very favorable fashion and they eventually make it to this city which is dead and it really actually reminded me of um there's a city in firefly that's kind of dead like it just feels very dead or, or in the movie the langoliers there's a city that's kind of just dead and you're like this is really strange there's life like opportunity and maybe even some life like activity but there's no people and that's just really eerie it's kind of a ghost town um and it's some parts of it are better maintained than others and so as you go along and you're learning about this you're like what the heck is going on here it's dangerous right like the teens don't know anything about this world they're learning as they go there's a freak snowstorm during part of it where um two of the characters nearly die and it's it's just really scary and the caretakers can't come into the city which the caretakers are the scary robots but not all of them are scary robots because some were really helpful to teddy and Inez. so there's this really kind of conflicting story there but as they go through if you go back and look at the story you see like there's this kind of helping aspect to it and you find out that the city's controlled by an artificial intelligence named Arcadia. And Arcadia really is portrayed in the story as a she. It's really portrayed as very human-like. She gets a holographic version of herself um, and all that. And I'm even saying she and herself, but when I think about AIs, I'm really trying to use the word it, right? It's not alive. So 
um, the city is alive in a sense and the city is excited to have humans back and at first I was like cool the city's excited that could be good because then you can find out like what the heck's going on um, and then I'm also thinking it's, it's an artificial intelligence so really is it going to be a good thing um, you know is this artificial intelligence which is slowly breaking down you can see it's like missing parts of itself is it going to all of a sudden be like, nope, I'm done with these humans or they're going to irritate it and it's going to be like off with their head. You just don't, you don't know. But what you find out is that Arcadia has been hoping for humans to come back, that the caretakers were created to um, terraform and preserve the land so that humans could come back. Humans left the earth through a wormhole. Crazy. I know I was like, what? Um, humans left the earth through a wormhole and because we screwed up the earth through climate control issues. We, the bees died, right? Like that was the starting point. The bees were dying and we screwed up our own earth, started all these catastrophes, humans fighting against humans. And so some humans left and the humans that were left went underground. And so Arcadia is like, yo, I'm going to tell you where to find those humans. Um, but I have a little request for you first. I want to die. I've been alive for far too long. I'm done. I'm breaking down and I want to die. And so Holden is actually faced with a decision. Holden and Inez are actually faced with a decision to decide whether Arcadia is going to live or die. In a sense. Um, and uh, before the group can make a decision, Holden makes a decision for them, which is actually based on, there's a whole backstory to that that is very personal for him. So it makes sense when you read it. But obviously, uh, a city that has been caring for them and keeping the caretakers at bay now no longer functioning is going to be a major conflict. So that all happens in episode 14, which is second to last. And we go into episode 15 and I'm like, oh my God, oh, who's going to die? What's going to happen? Are they going to find these other humans? What's happening? Oh, and by the way, how they ended up as a remake, this is so crazy. <laughs> the caretakers got tired of waiting for the humans to come back. So they went through a wormhole, plucked them out right before the second of death and brought them here to this earth. So now all these questions in my mind, I'm like, okay, so can they go back? They can, cause they can go back to the wormhole. Would they still remember what they've learned and remade? Will they actually die? So like, are they gonna go back to the moment of their death and poof, they're gone? Or can they go back to a little bit before and fix it? Like people like Nevaeh who are clearly going to, who it's, it's you know caused by cancer you can't it's not like holden and say who are in a car accident you could fix like what's going to even happen there totally have all these questions in my mind that i'm like where is season two is it 2017 yet um i'm really looking forward to next season obviously um oh and i guess i should talk about what happened in the last episode so obviously arcadia is now kind of shutting down and they have to gather all the supplies that they can so that they can go they they know they have a map of where the humans went so they have to be able to get to them. But along the way, obviously caretakers are coming in and there's this kind of subplot that's also happening while they're doing all of this stuff about caretakers, another caretaker who is kind of like trying to please an entity. And I'm assuming that entity is Arcadia so that caretakers can come back um, and maybe remaking another one of the previously dead remains. That's, I, that was what I got from it. I hope that I'm not misinterpreting that um and also there was uh, the, i think either the same or a different caretaker that was like look i created the perfect paradise and i brought you the two perfect people inez and teddy and so it's i think that that conflict of wanting to please the mother is going to become a big thing in the next um episode there is a death in the final episode i was totally gutted although i expected a lot worse um and i won't spoil that for those of you that haven't read that but I was expecting more from more deaths <laughs> from the episode and I'm glad I'm glad we didn't have more deaths than that. Um, overall whole series, I um, things I loved about the format. So things I loved about the format for the whole series, I so I actually appreciate that it was that it is serialized. I when I read books, I'm like getting through them as fast as I can. This made me really think about it and the Episodes are only about 30 pages long, about 45 to, minutes to an hour on audio. They are available in both when you purchase the episode for $2 or the whole season, which I think is like $21. Um, I really appreciate the fact that I got little, I had to follow it for 15 weeks basically. And I followed along. I did not read ahead. 
um, I followed along as they came out so that I wasn't tempted to um, get to the get to the point and not have any more or get to the point and know too much for somebody else who I might be talking to. So I love that about it. I love that it's ebook and audio. The narrator is great. I did have a chance to listen to one of the episodes. I appreciate that as a person who commutes. I prefer my media that way. Um, although they have released their other serials in a book form. So they may do the same with Remade. So for those of you that like physical copies, that might be a possibility. Um, one of the things I think came out later or either that or just wasn't in my publisher provided copies was um, a little snippet about the series, a little bit about what happened like on previously on the last episode of Remade, which is totally like how it is in, in TV. Um, I love that piece because it gives you just little snippets of what happened last episode. And then a who's who so you can be reminded of who the characters are because it is such a big cast and sometimes we're not seeing everybody in every episode and so it's like oh wait who was that person? What was their motivation? Who are they? What's going on? This helps you to remember that so really really appreciate that. Um, my two favorite episodes are actually later part of the season episode 11 which is Loki's story and episode 14 which is the second to last story. Episode 14 is written by Matthew Cody who did create the series. It's the episode where Holden makes that tragic decision to um, shut down Arcadia at her request and so I really loved how that rolled out. I really I know I read an interview for him and he really wanted us to consider that as a conflict. Um, maybe it's because I love him so much and I can really see how what happened in his background could lead to that point. I um, I get why he did it and I don't fault him for it because teenagers are sometimes impulsive and we appreciate that about them because you, you don't have all those thinking processes in place necessarily and that actually can lead to good things. Um, so I'm hoping that that leads to good things for, for the remakes. Um, some of the things that I thought of as I was going so I created all these there every episode I felt like I was creating theories about why they were there theories from um did did somebody create like a sims like world and transport their souls there I was curious about um if if they were plucked out of purgatory and somebody brought them to this world which is actually kind of closest to how it all um ended up and I would have never guessed the whole wormhole thing and I don't know why since Illuminae is my favorite book, why I never went there, but um, I would have never guessed the wormhole thing. And that was just fascinating to me and bringing in the climate aspect and the bees into it. I was like, yeah, totally like having, you know, the 100 type um, feelings in my head. So I totally understood that. 